Now let's use the partial definition and the properties to prove the following exercise. The exercise is about the information from the second page. First, let's show that at the origin, E00 is the second page is equal to Z00 uh, infinity, means it stabilizes after the second page. And this is equal to the zeros cohomology of the total complex. Okay, so now let's prove this. Here is the second page where the arrows are nice move. Let's look at the object at the origin. The object E00 sub 2. And consider the cohomology at this place, which is E003. By definition of cohomology, this is just the kernel modulo the image. But in this case, the kernel and images are clear because the arrows connecting Z, uh, E002 with other objects are just zero arrows. So in this case, the kernel becomes E002 itself and the image is a zero object. So now we have E003 uh, isomorphic to E002. The story will continue. So E002 is isomorphic to Z003, isomorphic to Z004, all the way until E00 infinity, which means the objects at the origin will stabilize after the page 2. Now, to determine the relation between the zeros cohomology of the total complex and E00 sub infinity. Let's recall the filtration theorem. In our case, uh, it is actually trivial because when k is 0, then it follows immediately that E00 infinity is isomorphic to the zero's cohomology of the total complex. So we have proved the part one of this exercise. Second, let's show that there's an exact sequence connecting objects in the second page. Recall the diagram we drew for the second page. I look at the object E012. The arrows associated to E012 are all zero arrows. So this means the cohomology at E012 is uh, E012 itself. So now it follows that E02, E012 isomorphic to E013. So it st stabilizes after the page 2. By the filtration theorem, there's an embedding from E0012 which is same as the 01 infinity to the first cohomology of the total complex. Now let's look at the object as a position 1, 0. Let's look at this object, the object in the third page, E0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 3. By definition, this is the cohomology here, which is the kernel of D102 
modular modular image, but this image is zero. So it is isomorphic to just the kernel of D102. In the third page, however, there will be no arrows connecting these nine objects. This is because the shape of D3 looks like this. And you see uh, such arrow uh, will not be able to connect any of two objects in this diagram. In particular, the object E10 at the page 3 will stay alone. Therefore, it follows that the kernel of D10 in the second page is an isomorphic to E103 since it stabilizes after page 3. In the fourth page, this object will remain the same all the way to E10 infinity. Now, by the filtration theorem, we have at degree 1, there is a filtration oops, from from E01 infinity, E10 infinity to the cohomology of the total complex H1E. In other words, this says the quotient of H1 of E modulo E01 infinity is isomorphic to E10 infinity. Now we have the, the exactness of the following part of this exact sequence we want to prove. Let me explain the exactness at each place. It is exact at E012 because E012 is isomorphic to E01 infinity. And uh, by the filtration theorem, this is an embedding. Now, why is it exact at this, uh, the first cohomology group of the total complex? To find out why it is exact in here, we need to first figure out what this arrow is. This arrow can be decomposed into two parts. This first part, first green arrow, is a projection from H1 of E to the kernel of D10 sub 2. And this projection has a kernel E01 infinity, which is this guy. This is the monomism. So the image of this arrow is the same as the kernel of this arrow. How about the second, second green arrow? This arrow comes from here. The embedding of kernel of D102 into this guy. So this is a monomorphism. Now we look at this, the original arrow. Its kernel, since this is a monomorphism, which doesn't change the kernel by the theory of abelian categories, the kernel of this arrow will be the same as the kernel of this arrow, which is the image of this arrow. So we have proved the exactness in here. Now, how about the exactness in here? Actually, this is trivial because the kernel of this guy is precisely this object. And this is an epimorphism. So the image of this arrow is precisely the kernel. And this is monomorphism, so it doesn't change this image. So kernel of this is the image of this. Now let's continue. Let's show the exactness at this part. Now let's go back to look at the second page. In particular, let's look at what's happening 
at E02 sub 2. Let's compute E002 in the third page. In the third page, this object is isomorphic to the cohomology at E02 in the second page, which from this diagram we know it is just the co kernel of D10 sub 2. As we have already mentioned before, every object in this diagram will stabilize after the page 3. So, in particular, this uh, E02 sub 3 will stabilize and become E02 infinity. Okay, now before we can use the filtration theorem, let's look at one more object. The object E112. E112 actually stabilizes even earlier. It st stabilizes after the page 2. Because in the page 2, there are already no arrows connecting it with other non-zero objects in this diagram. So, it stabilizes, become E11 infinity. And actually, we also want to look at this object, E202. The same argument will show that E20 also stabilized, stabilizes after page 3. So this gives us E20 infinity. And E203 is actually the kernel of D202. Okay, so we have stabilized objects in here. Now we get a filtration from E0 to infinity to the second cohomology of the total complex. The composition of these two arrows will be precisely the one we need for the exact sequence. As we mentioned above, E0 to 3 is isomorphic to the co-kernel of this arrow. So and there's a epimorphism from E02 infinity to this co-kernel. This is an epimorphism. Now, we denote the composition of all these arrows by F. And this F will be precisely the map we want in here. So now let's show the exactness at Z0 to sub 2. Notice that the kernel of F, which is the kernel of the composition of all these maps, since this part is a monomorphism, so it doesn't affect the kernel by the theory of abelian categories. So the kernel of F be precisely the kernel of this guy. So it's a kernel, a co-kernel of D102. But by definition of image in abelian category, this is precisely precisely the image of D1, comma zero sub two. So now we have proved the exact in here. So now we have proved the exactness in every case. So we are done. Okay, so far everything we have done is based on the so called rightward orientation, i.e., in the zeros page, 
we have arrows only pointing rightwards. But what will happen if we reverse the roles of horizontal and vertical morphisms? After we do this, the, the sequence of arrows giving the spectral sequence look like this. And you may want to compare it with the arrows of the rightward orientation. And you can see the difference. This new spectral sequence is denoted E with the subscript upward arrow. And we say it has the upward orientation. And again, we would have a filtration theorem. In the upward orientation, we should have almost the same thing uh, with the rightward orientation, except that we switch the two components in the superscript. And this is the upward orientation. But there's an important thing we have to keep in mind. The cohomology of the total complex in here will be the same as the kth cohomology of the total complex in here. So these two cohomologies are exactly the same thing. And what's the big deal in this? In practice, there are two ways to compute the spectral sequences, either along upward orientation or the rightward orientation. One of those two orientations might be easier than the other. Say, the rightward orientation is easier. After we compute the spectral sequence along the rightward orienta orientation, we get the kth cohomology group of the total complex, and we plug it into the filtration of the upward orientation, and we will get information about those uh, objects in the spectral sequences, spectral sequence of the, of the upward orientation. And in particular, if we get the cohomology of the total complex equal to zero by computing the rightward orientation spectral sequence in this second filtration, we will immediately get the objects in the upward orientation equal to zero. So by using the filtration in both of these two orientations, you can get a lot of unexpected results. And we will see in below in the examples.